Number one New York Times bestseller, Quiet, The Power of Introverts in a World That Can't Stop Talking, written by Susan Cain. A must-read book, as Forbes, an American business magazine states, the book pivots the idea of introverts not getting appreciation for their intelligent minds, the form in which the world is set up, causing introverted individuals to feel as if they don't fit in. So how and when do you find out if you're an introvert or an extrovert? Well, it all starts in elementary where everybody is friends and differences don't matter. Students are often working in groups for almost every task engaging with others. Once you hit high school, you notice that it's not the same big group of friends from elementary. You guys are now divided into different friend groups, most likely according to your likings. Unlike in elementary, you don't engage much with others. Desks are now in rows where one is facing another's back. These discoveries of your liking start to be explored as you get older, anytime from middle school to high school. You decide things like whether you like being with others or being alone, going to parties or staying home. If you're a conversationalist or a quiet one, not only do you discover your likings, but you notice the world is set up for extroverted people. Susan Cain interviews with numerous individuals, one being Adam McHugh, an evangelical pastor who is an introvert. He shares his experience of being a quiet pastor and explains the requirement of having to be extroverted to become a pastor. He even wrote a book, Introverts in the Church. It's gone too far to the extent that if you want to be a religious person, a pastor, or a member of the church, you have to be extroverted. In the business and company's work field, it's the same thing. Only extroverted employees are wanted. It makes sense for a business to want extroverts to advertise their products since the energy they have attracts people, but they should give introverts a try. Take for example Apple. They're going to want someone who has the right energy to advertise their products, rather than an introvert who will just advertise it without effort for the sake of getting the job done. This is an advertisement from Apple as an example. For the first time ever, iPhone 15 Pro and iPhone 15 Pro Max are made with aerospace grade titanium. Did you say titanium? What an incredible material. It's light, strong, and crucial for space exploration. Mind if I... The male and female in this video have the right energy and attitude to advertise their product. Throughout the book, Kane advises people to give introverts a chance to share their intelligence which could sometimes help out the business more than an extroverted advertiser would. Even if there isn't enough appreciation towards introverts' intelligent minds, that shouldn't lead them to feeling as if they can't do anything good for the people. They should use their voice and share their opinions because who knows, they could probably do better than extroverts when it comes to doing something good for the people, just like Rosa Parks and Dr. Seuss did. Parks was one of the most famous introverts that made an immense impact in the world. She was known as a quiet leader who helped shape the nation. The only negative was that she was not credited for her work due to being an introvert. The New York Times published a magazine with the two front pages celebrating Martin Luther King Jr.'s role in the movement, but did not once mention Parks. Another famous introvert that left us with something impactful to our education system. Dr. Seuss. Although he was always quiet, alone, and not the type of energetic person people would imagine he was, he became successful with his books. Many people believe that the quiet ones have no knowledge since they hardly talk or put themselves out there. But it's not like that. Introverts and extroverts can be equally as intelligent and be equally appreciated. Read the book to learn more. Thank you.